effective interpersonal communications and counseling skills that play a large part in midwifery practice. Active listening, empathy, problem solving, and the core counseling skills of assessment, goal setting, and using motivational tools. From building a trusting relationship at the first appointment with clients through the birth and the postpartum visits, midwives will encounter many situations in which they will need effective communication tools in their repertoire and the skills to utilize them. Midwives will also use these tools with clients' families, colleagues, other professionals, students, and others. There will be times when the communication is urgent and factual, and times when it will be warm and empathic, as midwives need to relay everything from good to terrible news. It's time a midwife communicates. They must do so from the position of understanding who their audience is, what they want or need, what information needs to be conveyed, and what role their own thoughts and emotions play in the communication. It takes a great deal of self-awareness and practice to become an effective communicator. To be an effective communicator and counselor, the midwife must understand their own values, beliefs, and personal characteristics, and how this may impact their work with clients. The values of midwives provide guidance for them as an individual, determining what they believe to be right and wrong, and good and bad. They also influence what they deem to be of worth and importance in their lives. Whether they realize it or not, their values involve them in their everyday lives and in the client's or counseling and client or midwife relationship. It is essential that anyone working with people in any kind of counseling capacity be aware of their own values and beliefs and be self-aware of their emotional, physical, and mental response to the client. This means taking time to reflect on their beliefs and assess their effect on their feelings and emotions. That is, checking in with themselves to assess what is happening internally. Midwives may ask themselves, am I feeling strong emotions as I listen? Do I feel stress or discomfort in my body? Are there words and phrases running through my mind that prevent me from being able to fully attend to what the client is saying? As a midwife, if they are feeling emotionally activated, they can utilize self-regulation tools to manage the activation. Self-regulation tools include slowing down the breath, taking a sip of water, refocusing on the clients, and, if necessary, asking for a brief break in the meeting. From this increased self-awareness comes from the ability to set and maintain professional and personal boundaries. These boundaries provide emotional safety for both midwives and their clients as they navigate the transformative experience of birth together. Awareness of personal values and beliefs also allowed the counselors to work in a non-judgmental way with clients. 
that have opposing values, or refer such clients to an alternative resource more congruent with the client's values. There is no standard that states that a counselor must ignore their own values and beliefs entirely. But ethical practice requires that they not impose their personal values and beliefs on the person with whom they are counseling. In most cases, it is not fair to expect midwives to ignore very strongly held values and beliefs in order to serve the needs of clients. There is no shame in acknowledging to oneself that it would be difficult, if not impossible, to work with certain clients because of a fundamental clash over values, beliefs, or consequently, behaviors. Referring the client to another midwife solves the problems while ensuring that the client receive the services they need.